Remember what I said about two years ago, guys? About a year and a half ago? And I said, man, this, I don't know, this prediction might bite me in the ass. But I told you when the time when the right was marketing himself as anti-NATO, I was telling you guys that Trump is going to flip. I don't know when. I don't know how. I don't know how he's going to spin it. But I told you guys he was going to flip, which lead to the main story. Trump had a uh, had a fundraiser. And fundraisers are always fun when we get leaks because, you know, cameras are usually not allowed. So we got leaks in here. Because when these fundraisers, the ruling class, uh, they say the quiet part out loud because they are among friends, right? So Trump in this, he made all these sweeping promises. He was talking to the donors. And when you read his article, they explain how during these, these fundraisers, they talk about foreign policy way more openly than they do normally. Like, you have Biden, yeah, I'll, 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 we should kill all the Palestinians. Like, they behind closed doors. They say crazy shit. So this is what Trump is saying behind closed doors when he is not marketing to MAGA, my friends. Donald Trump says he will bomb Moscow and Beijing. And I have a hotspot video coming out on this. So I, I know it would directly what he said. He said, if I was president, when Russia invaded Ukraine, I would have bombed Moscow. And if I'm president, when China takes Taiwan, I am bombing Beijing. And based on what a lot of people estimate, China uh, may seize control of their province of Taiwan around 2027. That's what a lot of people are guessing, which will be when Trump is in charge, because I think he's going to win. And then Trump, what he say, he will bomb Beijing if China uh, uh, literally engages in their sovereignty and take control of their own province. So I know I said a lot here. There's a lot of cover here. This is essentially the main story of, of today. Uh, well, Donald Trump is essentially saying uh, he'll bomb Moscow and Beijing. I'll pass to you, Gabriel. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that the the if you look at this, because I know we're always in the horse race, that's what the media does is, well, there's this neck and neck horse race between Biden and Trump. And there are these fundamental differences. They're absolutely incompatible. But if we look at this from the point of view of class analysis, we know that they're both pro-imperialist and they're both pro-capitalist and they just have slightly different agendas to offer the ruling class. And in Trump's case, it is pretty clear that the principal war is the war against China uh, because China is, well, China represents an alternative model of global development and China's economy has uh, continued to develop at a pace that makes the U.S. economy look like a, a little bit of a joke. And so there's, it's already based on purchasing power parity surpassed the U.S. economy, and it's likely that it will uh, surpass it in absolute terms relatively soon. Uh, in the, Biden, the case of the Biden administration, the war on China is on, obviously, with yeah. all of the pivot to Asia, but it's a, a war that they're trying to wage basically through these proxies, right? Through Ukraine as a war against Russia, and Russia is ultimately a war against China. And so these are different imperial strategies, if you will. But the fundamentals are always decided upon by the bourgeois state managers who aren't elected, uh, who are just part of the U.S. national security state and aren't subjected to democratic oversight. And those people know what war is, uh, you know, on the agenda. And so I think we have to look behind the kind of horse race of electoral politics to the deep functionings of the U.S. empire. And there will be differences if, and I agree, I think that Trump most likely will come into office. Uh, so when he, he comes into office, there will be some significant differences. And he is known as being a bit chaotic and a bit like opportunistic, whereas Biden's asleep at the wheel and, you know, the agenda is pretty slow and steady as she goes. And so those can lead to significant differences. Um, but in any case, the, the, the fundamentals of U.S. empire building and its assault on uh, projects of self-determination around the world, those are going to continue uh, regardless of who's in office. It doesn't matter. This is Scott Ritter in response to this story. Um, and Trump has been very careful. I explained this before. Trump has been very careful how he messaged Ukraine. I told you, guys, he's going to sell them out. You got to know he, he armed Ukrainian rebels. And let me read this tweet because I'm going to also explain how the mainstream media, I noticed, and even look at the sources now, I'm going to show you guys 
a, a source from Ukraine. There's a source from Moscow I use. There's a UK source I'm about to show you. I noticed that the liberal media is not talking about the story. I looked at MSNBC, CNN, nothing. You would think this would be something that they report on where Trump said he would bomb fucking Moscow. And I and I mentioned the German hospital I make today. Liberal media is not talking about this because it's directly, it could directly contradict their Putin puppet narrative that they are running to this day. To this day, Gabriel, they're still running it. I know because I watch too much court media. <laughs> I wait more than that. Selfie. I read too much of the corporate articles. I literally see them say that Trump is working for Putin in the year 2024. On 5.30, they still say it, but so they don't report on this stuff. Then You know, the same way they don't report on the fact that Trump approved the CIA uh, uh, attacks on Russian infrastructure, how Trump pulled out of a nuclear arm treaty with Russia with dated back to the Cold War. They don't mention none of those things. You had Biden, uh, not Biden, sorry, but Trump, and this has come from Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky said Trump is one of the most anti-Russian presidents and you can make an argument since Bill Clinton, but one of the most anti-Russian presidents of my lifetime. Anyway, let me read this tweet. Let me wrap up here. Uh, here's Scott uh, Ritter, friend of the show. If your campaign promises include pledges to bomb either Russia or China, you can't be president of the United States. Sorry, Don Donald, you're disqualified. And I don't got time to read all of it, but bro, the cope from the MAGA grifters who was pretending that Trump is, was anti-war? They don't know what's the evidence. He didn't say that Trump would never. Trump would never obey me. I am. A, I believe in celebrity worship. Trump is my daddy. He would never say this. But Trump has a long history of being an unhinged neo neocon. Not only this, we have Miley who prevented Trump from misusing nuclear weapons. You had John Bolton. And his generals that allegedly talked Trump out of launching a ground invasion to Venezuela. Here's another quote from Trump. U.S. should put Chinese flags on F-22 jets and bomb the shit out of Russia. Look at the date here. March 2022. So when it, you guys see how I get very frustrated and very upset when I see people hint. And I'm looking at you, Russell Brand. When I see people hint. I'm looking at you, Tucker Carlson. When I see people hint. That Trump was ever anti-war? Trump believes in the ideology of Ronald Reagan and standard neocons of peace to strength. That's what they say all the time. He just said it last week. I believe in governing through peace to strength, which means sanctionings, escalating tensions, and hoping the other side back down, which is not what a pro-peace candidate does. Oh, I promise I was done. Here's another one. Donald Trump says he will, well, this is the recent story I just covered. Uh, you got to see, you got to go to all these foreign websites, Pravada. This one is from Kiev, this website here. Uh, what's this? This is the England website. Well, so once again, this is an uh, observation. Liberal media is not covering this story, which I think is kind of funny. 